Welcome everybody, Lambo here, and this is your first mod for Farming Simulator 22. I'm going to walk you through it. This is meant for newbies, so if I go slow on some things, I apologize, but we're going to try to be as thorough as we can. Welcome to the show. Hit that like button, subscribe for more, lets me know to keep pumping these out. In order to follow along with me, you're going to require to download some software. One of them being Notepad++. This is how we're going to edit XML documents. The next will be Paint.net. This is just a free editing software. And Audacity, which is sound editing. You'll need to download these and install them prior to watching this video. First step I'm going to do, I'm going to build it on my desktop to make it as easy as possible for you to learn with me. And pardon me, it is absolutely freezing here and I'm shivering. I'm going to try to warm up and not stutter too much. So first, we're just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it my mod FS22. You name it whatever you want. I like to put FS22 at the end since we have all still have FS19 cruising around. People know. So we'll open that bad boy up and... There's a couple of things that we're going to need in here, and one of them is going to be a mod disk. So first, we're going to be working with the mod disk here, and I have a working copy you can download from our Patreon page. It's more like our social media page, so I don't think you have to pay for everything that goes on there. I just don't like to use Facebook, but I have a working version on there, but I will walk you through right now how to make your own. First off, we have to tell the document that we're working with XML version, the encoding, and standalone, whether or not. Next, we need to have mod description. The disk version for Farming Simulator 22 is going to be 62. If you would like to watch one of David's videos, he goes into great detail on how to figure out what disk version the game is currently using. So, we're not going to cover that, we're going to do the down and dirty real quick. So, author, obviously I'm going to put my name here, you can put your name, whatever you need to do. Here I've added in the store boosted. Uh, icon file .dvs. and if we look at an in-game one for reference here's the store advantage one all you have to do is open it up with your paint.net once you have it open hit control and R on your screen and it'll actually show you the width and height so this will give you the parameters that it's wanting you to edit or have the size of an icon file This could be different for others, but when I go to save my image files, especially if they're transparent, I save it in B3, BC3 Linear DTX5 with these settings here. And it seems to work fine for me. If you have something else, please comment down below. Next, we're covering the multiplayer. Just always set it to true. And then, pretty important, store items. This is going to be what's actually putting your mods in the store for you to purchase. Super important. You can actually make more lines below it and add additional mods to make packs. You would just change the XML file path name to whatever it is you're adding. So we'll delete that for now just so we can move on. Now since we're telling the game to look in this XML folder, we actually have to create the XML folder inside of our mod. So let's make a small folder real fast called XML. And you don't have to do this with the folder, but it keeps my stuff organized when I start making big packs. Next, it's going to be looking for mymod.xml. Now that is not exactly what we want it to be looking for, so I'm going to find an in-game truck or item and we'll try to mess with it a little bit. So inside my farming simulator data shared folder, you will find a ton of assets and wheels and lights and stuff like that. But we're going to go up one. Data and then to vehicles here. Now, you got to know what you're looking for because it can be confusing if you don't know brands. But they're under their brand and then name from there. So let's say this Ridgy track. I do believe this is the electric tractor in game. And what we are going to do is we're going to double click on that, open it up, and we're going to find its XML file and see right there. Totally cool, I called it. Just learning all these things. And it has its own sounds. So we're going to click on that. We're going to hit Control C. 
and we're going to move back over to our mod folder here and we're going to paste it inside of here. Now, when we do that, we don't want to mess with the in-game stuff because it'll mess with your game. Do not mess with any of that. You're better off after you found the file you want. We're going to mess with this a little bit, so we're going to take the store. I'm going to copy that over here just so we don't have to mess around too much. But we're going to pull that out and close it just so we don't dink with it. Since I'm over here, back in our mods folder, and we just took the store out, we're going to hit new folder and name it store. Take that image we just put in there, we're going to put it inside store. And now we have our XML in here. Its name, and I'll try to zoom in for anybody in the back, SKE50. I like to... We're just going to grab its name really fast, go to our mod disk, press that there, bingo. Now this is going to be reading a file, it won't throw an error. We're going to move into the brands next. Alright, now I have the brand coding inside the mod disk here. And you can change this uh, just as long as it's all caps and it's what your vehicle or whatever it is your branding is going to refer to to get this image and title and the title could be my brand it could be space my brand be whatever it is just put something your brand is going to be looking for a logo to use now I have it listed as looking in the brands folder just to keep stuff organized and the name of the the image is a brand.dds so we need to go over here and create a brand folder and I already have a DDS made which will be included inside this template and I'm actually just gonna open it up for you I like to have my brand at 512 by 256 seems to be work fine no errors so I've opened it up and I've already pre-played with this. You can go through and change your brand how you want it, but in game just to make it simple and generic for you to edit, I just put this and I'm going to hit save as a DDS file. Here's my save settings. Press OK. I'm done with that. Now when this goes to call my brand, the title in the game is going to be my brand and it's going to use this brand here. Now I'm going to teach you folks about extra source files. I figure this is kind of intermediate learning level but might as well get you started early so you can have fun with it. So extra source files included in this template I'm going to give you is a categorizer, a mod, title changer and this is going to allow you to create new categories and change the title of your mods for anything you edit mods you make in the future really cool if you want to go through and make a whole bunch of boosted items so uh, and find them quickly so I'm going to show you how to do that and then we're actually going to do a little sneak peek and dive into this categorizer and show you how to change some of the source coding it, it displays in the log if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. I am building it up. I'm trying my very hardest. We are getting so close to 10K. That'd be cool to see that. Uh, thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. So I have already put in the change mod title and categorizer in this mods folder. But if we look here, it's looking for scripts. So we actually need to make a folder named scripts. So we'll go right here to new folder inside of our mod and we're just gonna call that scripts real quick. And we will take these two and drop them in scripts. Now that scripts is there, we're actually gonna open this categorizer and show you something neat. Once you load it up, but the only thing I would suggest you edit and this is the only thing you should edit is if you want to change the name that it gives you when in your log file so you know what mod is loading or possibly which one is causing an error so we're gonna do loading 
my mod tutorial by Lambo. I'll know if you're uh, you guys sending me log files if you've changed this or not because it'll tell me in your log file. But you can change this to whatever you want. Uh, loading my trucks, my cow, whatever. Now we're actually gonna name the new category, and I'm just gonna call it in-game edits. The title is gonna be in-game edits, just so you can see what the capabilities are here, what what kind of text you can do, and whether or not it's a vehicle or a placeable, which uh, definitely helps out a lot. And I'll add this little code right there so you don't end up forgetting. Now, one thing you're gonna have an error with if we don't fix this immediately is gonna be store boosted DDS. So it's gonna create this new category and use this image as its category image. So we need to make sure that store boosted, which I have already created and it's inside my store folder. Da 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 just playing around change these as you guys see fit this is just to help but it is inside my store folder so I actually just need to add store to this and then forward slash now it should be correct the next fun thing is going to be mod mod title change and what this will do is it'll actually just change the mods that I create or anything like that it'll say edits by Lambo just something simple silly easy fun adds a little bit of spice to your mods now you know how to use that Lua working as is right now my mod FS 22 that we just made would work in game it would create the category and it would put this it actually not yet it wouldn't put it in its category but I'm gonna walk you through that's the next step of messing with an in-game item so let's dive into that but before we do hit the like hit the subscribe call it good take a break get some water hit pause come back okay let's go so now I actually have this electric tractor open and we were digging down through it to see what we'd want to change so let's say right off the bat, I want to know that this is the boosted one. That way I cheat whatever or not. I just need to know. So I'm just gonna put boosted. Neat, right? Okay. Um, even the function, I need to, maybe I'm not paying attention and I don't read the title and I wanna add a function to let myself know, hey, this is boosted. You could do that. Store packs, this is where it would be found. I wouldn't mess with that. Um, same thing with the image here. If you wanted to change your image, this would be the place, just like we did below, where we would be referencing, oh, let's see, store, store boosted. That's uh, not in the correct place, right? So we need to fix that. But you would do the same thing here to if you had changed that image at all. Now the price, uh, I'm kind of cheap, you know, I want a bunch of these cruising around on my farm and really I don't want to pay for them when they break down, so I'm just going to add one there. And this is just changing how fast it breaks down or how slow. The smaller the number, the faster it breaks. The higher the number, the longer it takes to break down. Uh, the brand, if we were to change our brand, this would be where we would do it. The brand of this vehicle is my brand. So we're going to go to brand change that and this has it in the category s but if you remember we actually made our own category so and it is called in-game edits we're going to try to change the category so now it's under in-game edits it is referencing to this i3d file here uh, we don't need to mess with it because we're just messing with the characteristics nothing to do with the body or anything like that so for this video, we're not going to do anything in GE. This is going to be all strictly just learning the code before I throw you in the in with the sharks. Um, this is going to be your weight components and stuff. Uh, that'll be something for a later video. Wheels. This is the complexity. Another video. In all reality, I want to make this thing to where I can change the color, 
and to where the engines are a little stronger so I can run those ridiculous items that normally wouldn't be ran with it. So we're at the engine. He's, I want this to fly. So a lower number here, minimum forward gear ratio, would make it go faster. So this says max forward speed 43. Yeah, I'm going to boost that to 120. That doesn't actually change anything, though. Can also go here to the torque scale, and we can just get kind of crazy with it. And maybe uh, this is not the proper way to do it. But if you want some insane power without doing any math, just put some numbers in here. I wouldn't go any higher than that for this. And then I'm going to be crazy and just put that to 6,000. And then, uh, yeah, that should be kind of crazy. A lot more power allows me to run a couple things. It still weighs absolutely nothing, so I'm going to scroll back up to the components that we were talking about earlier. I'm actually going to make it heavier. So we're going to go 2 here, make it 2,000 mass. This is the different components, the probably the front and the back but just playing with the weight a little bit so if we hook up something big it doesn't tip over on us if you locate the fill unit config configurations you can see here that it uses kilowatts and electric charge fill types and how much capacity it has so I actually want to boost that to like 800 and it doesn't actually show the battery level on the HUD or in the shop, which I think is dumb. Well, we can change that to true. So now it'll show that in shop. Now I actually have some rim color configuration code we're just going to drag over there and now I should be able to change the color of the rims in game. And we're going to do the same thing with uh, base material configurations. And now you can change the color. Now you can just hit save and we will go back to our main thing here. Double check everything looks smooth. I think it's ready to zip up, throw it in game load it up, test it out, and then look at the log text. Next, you're going to want to locate your log file for your game. Mine is located under Documents, My Games, Farming Simulator 22, Log. You're going to want to open that with Notepad++. Once you have it up in Notepad++, you're going to have this long list of stuff, and it's best to scroll through until you see the word warning, or error, warning. See, so this is nothing that has to do with us, but keep scrolling down and not necessarily think, so error, can't load resource, it can't find my brand, so I would need to go back into and make sure that it can find brand.dds. I have found brand.dds. It's in the correct folder, but what I had done wrong is I capitalized it here when in the actual log file it's looking for a lowercase one. So all I would need to do is either A, change it to where it's looking for it, or B, I could just change it right here. Which, for simplistic sake, I'm just going to change the name right here to brand. Now that error should be fixed. Oh, because of how Windows is, it's a pain in the butt. You can't just change a capital letter. You have to put in something else, completely change the word, and then you can go back. So now that error should be fixed. Next, I've come to find out that when playing around with the in-game stuff, it seems to throw errors on the sounds, so you end up wanting to copy the sound XML file path and kind of edit it yourself because Giants has some errors in there that they need to fix. The sound path is located inside the mod XML and we're just going to follow that using our Explorer. Now that I found it, I'm just going to copy it and put it inside my mods folder. But here we're going to call it sounds. Then we're going to open it up with the text editor. 
the error we're having is on the transmission loop. It can't find the sample. I do believe that there's a missing dollar sign that Giants forgot. So we're going to scroll down until we find the transmission section. Transmission. Same as I said. Do you notice that it doesn't have the dollar sign right here? So we're going to put that dollar sign in there. That error should go away. Let's move on to the next. Same thing. If it has an error, a lot of times when it goes to call it, it'll sit there and run the error over and over and over and over again until it's fixed. In order to fix this error so it uses the proper sounds, we actually need to reroute the vehicle XML to read that sound file. So it is located in the sounds folder. All we're going to do is subtract that and hit save because we don't want to mess with the in-game one so it's best to just copy and paste that folder into your mod and then edit the XML as you see fit here to where we're still going to use the in-game sounds but now it's not going to throw that error. When it's all said and done you should be able to zip it up, drop it inside your mods folder and then play it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.